Hello everybody. We're back at the bench today with the uh, lower unit off of the 1959 Evinrude Fast Twin 18. Uh, it has been resealed, completely assembled. Uh, we've got the new water pump in it now. Uh, complete kit, wear plate, housing, impeller, new grommet. Um, and I've got the uh, gear case clamped up here in the clamp and I've got the pressure tester in it. Uh, we're going to give it some pressure and make sure everything is sealed up okay and not leaking. Um, do that first before we get uh, into reinstalling it. I'll put 6 PSI in it. It seems to be holding okay. Uh, it's always a good idea to move shift rod and rotate the drive shaft, prop shaft. It's in gear so everything is rotating. It's not dropping. Uh, it should sit in there for a while. Um, probably an hour is a good uh, Good test. I, I often don't let them sit that long, but um, then again, I don't leave mine sit in the water either. So whenever I'm not running the motor, I tip them up. So if they do have a slight leak, it, it helps keep the water out. Uh, seems to be holding well, though. Uh, I had this setting for a while earlier, and uh, it was holding pressure just fine. So we will take the pressure gauge out and get on with the reassembly but as you can see it's still holding uh, before when I checked it when it was leaking really bad it would it would just leak right down so drink the pressure out take the gauge out Put my gloves back on. I'll leave the uh, drain plug out of the bottom. I should take the one out of the top because once we get it reinstalled, we'll refill it. I actually ended up replacing two of these screws uh, in the last video. One of them the head twisted off of one of them when I was putting it back together. I had another one come off too, so when I took the skeg back off, I replaced them both. Also, you can see I've got an, a new O-ring in the groove here, and uh, I've got some grease on the splines. I should put a little bit more on this one side. There we go. Now we're going to move you back over to the stand. All right, as you can see here, in this groove that holds the uh, shift rod into the connector, I've got some yellow paint in there. That's just to make it easier to see once everything's lined up. Because if you don't have this groove lined up properly with the hole in the clip or the clamp that holds it, the halves together, it will damage the threads on the screw, and then the screw threads will thread into the brass piece on the other side after they've been flattened out, and it'll strip the threads right out of that piece. So you got to be careful with that.
All right, I am going to get the big screw that goes in here since this is a five bolt and uh, try to get this thing back in there. You have to be careful to get the water tube lined up and then the splines have to line up. It's got to go through the, uh, there's a plate and a base gasket and these with a little hole in it. Sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge to get it all lined up in there. So we'll see how that goes. Um, take a bit of Vaseline. Try to put it around the inside of this grommet. And then, ah, I see this has been, I see this a lot actually. Uh, this thing has been apart before, and whoever had it apart before, when they put the water tube back in, they put it in upside down. Uh, it should have a lead-in on the end that goes into the grommet in the pump. And it's you know, most of them are flat on the other end. This one has been put in with the lead-in going into the grommet in the leg. You gotta be careful. It's gonna flatten this out a little bit, which is, I can, I'll re-round it, but. This end, right here, with the angle on it, should fit into the water pump housing. The square end, like this, is supposed to go up into the exhaust housing. And I see them in, put in upside down a lot. I guess because it's easier to put them in the exhaust housing with the, the lead, but that's not how they go and it makes installation of the gear case more difficult and it's it's also you're more likely to fold up the uh, grommet in the water pump housing and then it won't pump right. You won't, you'll lose water out of that thing. So always put the flat end or the square end back up in there first if it comes out. take my center punch here and round that thing back out where I flattened it with the pliers. Alright, that should work. Now I gotta get a flashlight so I can see what I'm doing. And put some Vaseline around the square end. Uh. All right, let's have a look up in there and see the grommet. take my pliers and rotate it in that grommet so I get it lined up so it'll go in the pump. There we go. I don't know if you can see that but it's down kind of off to the right side just ahead of this bolt that holds the rubber mounting to the exhaust housing. That's pretty much where you want it to be Put some lubricant on that tube. Find my bolt again. Here we go. And put the shift lever in the forward position. That'll pull the connector up far enough that it'll stay out of the way. With that way you don't have to worry so much about getting that lined up when you're trying to line everything else up. So, let's sit this in. 
kind of let it ride along the bottom till you get up to the top and then pick it up a little bit, move it around till you These are always fun. Sometimes they just fall in and other times it takes me a little while. While I'm trying to line that drive shaft up there, it went into the through the hole in the uh, baffle plate and I've got the water tube started in the grommet. And then lost it again. pretty much as far as I can by hand. And that'll just keep everything from falling apart. Oops, sorry. Get my other four screws and a 7 16 ratchet. Start these in by hand. I usually do these in a crisscross. Grinch. Tighten up this fifth bolt. Now, we'll work on the, see if I can 
can do this without scratching the crap out of everything. Alright, now we'll see if we can get that uh, shift rod lined up again. I will need a, uh, my screw that holds that clamp together and a pair of needle nose pliers and a light. I'm going to reach down in here and get a hold of that shift rod and try to pull it up. And get it started into the hole in the clamp. And then move. I opened this clamp up a little bit with a screwdriver while I had it apart in an attempt to make this easier to get in here. But they still sometimes are a little tough. And this one looks like it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Should have opened it some more. Looks like I got to go in just a little bit more. Hold the shift rod, push the lever toward reverse. Okay, now we got it lined up. And I just knocked the screw off the bench. Found the screw and a little tooth washer. All right, I got them both. I'll take the screw and the pliers and start it back in through this hole. There should be little to no resistance. You should be able to push it back through with your fingers to the other side of the clamp and get it started. If you can't, you're probably dragging threads on that notch and you don't want to do that. Snug it up good, and then we put the cover plate back on. And cover and two oval head screws. Now, this one I need to make a gasket for because I've lost part of the gasket when I took it off. I haven't done that yet, but I will put it on there just to show you how it goes. And to finish up this part, you know, I'll run through the uh, this, and then in the next video, we'll refill the oil.
Okay. Tilt this back down. Prop shaft is in gear. You feel it grabbing the clutch dog. Neutral spins free. Reverse grabbing the clutch dog. Everything is working as it should, so we're ready to refill it. So that will conclude this video and in the next one we will replace the gear oil. Thanks for watching.